Hey, Doug Phillips. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of my series on the C Sharp trading bot or Algo bot. I call it the trade bot. Um, it doesn't matter what language you use, whether you use Python or whatever, you can use whatever language you like, you like but some of the concepts are the same. Uh, just the, the syntax and the language is different. So I'm writing in C Sharp. That's what you're going to see here in just a minute. Um, but I'm also going to show you what exactly I'm looking at this time when I want to check before I take a trade, okay? And what I'm talking about today is um, no price action or sideways price action where a stock is trading in a range and it's not really breaking out either high or low. And if I'm using a momentum strategy, which most of the time I am using a momentum strategy now, I'm looking for that stock to break up uh, and get above maybe the high day or whatever else, uh, whatever checks I've got going on, or is it going to break down and I'm going to short it, okay? Uh, so right now, two months ago, what I had to do is I would take a stock trade and I was not checking this. So there's a lot of times where I would take a trade and it would meet all my other criteria and then it would end up being a failing trade and I'm going to show you why, okay? Uh, so let's see, let's turn me off so we can concentrate on the video. And over here, I've got Pacific Oil and Gas uh, or Pacific Gas and Electric pulled up. And I've drawn two lines where, you know, this range or breakout is, okay? Not breakout, range, I'm sorry. I need to slow down. Talking way too fast, I'm sorry. So range right now, you can see it's about 1704, 1705 for the high. On the low side, it's roughly around 16.98. So we're only talking about a six or seven cent range, and that's okay if you're scalping. Um, but I'm not trying to scalp here. I'm trying to use momentum. So I really need this to come up and continue its breakout and continue going up. Um, like this right here, if I got in down here and then this was a strong, strong climb up, that would be a good range to get into because right there, that's 85, 15, that's a 20 cent range, okay? So you could get in right above VWAP and still make 10 cents or you know 11 cents per share, whatever it would be. But on the range here, this the sideways action, if my code is looking at VWAP, looking for it above VWAP, a solid candle above VWAP, solid body, then I'm sitting right here, and let's say I talk, take the top of the trade where it closed, was 17.04 and now it rises up here and gets up to 17.05, 17.06, I mean, and then falls back down. So what I noticed over the past two months that I've run this is before when I take a trade, I would go into uh, um, TD Ameritrade, my broker, into Thinkorswim. And if the trade started turning on me, I would either close it out, um, adjust my stop on it, or allow the trailing stop to continue to work and it would turn from a winning trade or break even to a losing trade. More often than not, it turned from a winning to a break even using the trailing stop. And it was because I was trading within this range a lot of times where there's not a lot of price movement it would never hit my profit stop with the trailing or, or whatever I had set at limit and it would come back down and then stop out. So in order to change that, in order to stop that from happening, I don't want my trading algo bot to take the trade in the first place. I don't even want it to sit here and look at above VWAP maybe or ab above the 50 EMA, which is the green line. Uh, you know, or maybe MACD, I, I don't even want it looking at that. I want to look at first, maybe it's just the price action, right? Because price action is king, right? I mean, it's, that, that's what you base everything off of. Oh, and by the way, uh, trading just closed for the day. So anyways, that's the bell you just heard. But um, so right here, this 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 line right here, and, and then coming back up, I'm checking and now this is what I want to do. So if I'm on this body right here and I'm about to take a trade or I want the algo bot to start checking to make the trade, now I want it to go back and grab so many candles back and then compare 
the highs and the lows and am I try trading within that range or not so let's go over to the code and I'm gonna keep this short okay because I don't want to keep you guys I know long videos of people talk like I do um, ramble on are annoying so forgive me for being annoying okay so let's go to the top of this right here so I wrote a function uh, check no price movement where I'm going to pass in the list of candles that I've gotten uh, from TD Ameritrade, who is my broker, right? That's who we're using right now is TD Ameritrade. So uh, I also want to pass in the last price. Okay, so if I'm checking every five minutes, the last five minute candle I've got, I want to check the that latest price, okay? Um, number max candles, I just put 10 because I didn't want it to um, go to infinity. I, I wanted something hard, hard coded that I could check against as a default. And then also this percent sideways not allowed. So I don't like the name of it. If you guys know of a better name, please put it down below. I, I don't like the name of this thing, but I'm going to leave it for now. Equals 30. And what that equals 30 is, is that's 30%. Now, the reason why that's there is this is not perfect, okay? Um, I know without a shadow of doubt that the stock market's not going to be perfect. I'm not going to be able to, to check everything perfectly. So I need to give a little bit of play. Okay. So maybe these candles like this one right here and this one here, you know, these three, they fall below or they wick below my low line. Okay. So it's not perfect. So what's going to end up happening is I need to give it a percentage of allowable sideways action. So, I'm saying that out of 100%, I'm allowing for 30% sideways action because there's going to be some some, con some consolidation or some some consolidation or there's also going to be periods and candles of low volume. And then all of a sudden players come into the market, they either start selling or they start buying whichever one and the volume shoots up. So that's why that's in there. And I just put, I use 30 as a default. There is no rhyme or reason why I use 30. I just pick that number based upon what my experience. And that's what I'm using right now uh, as the default. And I'll adjust it as I go along. Okay. And then my log level, that's a story for another day. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to go through those candles. Okay. Now the way I get them from my broker is they come in ascending order. I, I don't want to get ascending order. I want to check, you know, descending. So I've got the current candle right now, and then I'm going to start incrementally go back by each candle, each five minute candle. Okay. So if I'm using 10 candles, that's 50 minutes back, right? So 10 candles, five times 10. So what I'm doing is I'm going to sort them by descending. And then that way I get the latest, um, the latest and greatest first. And then I'm also, if this is the um, beginning of the day, what I've noticed is there could be candles with zero information. Now, it could either be because maybe it's a weekend or holiday, um, like we just had Memorial Day, there was no information for that. Uh, but what it also could be is it could be extended hours trading. And if your account doesn't have extended hours candles, it could be zero. Um, now for me, I, I don't trade extended hours 99.999% of the time. It's very rare when I do that. So I want to remove those information where the close is zero because I don't want them junking up um, my percentage. Okay. So now I only want to take the maximum number of records that we assign uh, that we specified above. Okay. Max candle. So I'm only taking 10. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through those last 10 candles. And I'm going to check the close. Um, one can't be uh, equal to zero. You know, just double checking that. But now I'm going to look at the close. And was it less than or equal the last price, that, so which is the current last price? And does my sideways count, uh, is it less than the max candles? So I'm using an incrementer and de-increment for my sideways count. So every time I determine it's a sideways movement, I increment by one. If it doesn't meet the criteria, I de-increment by one. Max candles 10. So right now we're starting at zero. Um, so it's going to go through and it's going to keep going through and incrementing. Okay. 
Now, once it does that, that's the first check. The second check, am I stuck in sideways action? Is the, is the symbol, the ticker, stuck in sideways action? Okay. So I'm looking at the sideways count. Does it equals max candles? Just, just in case. If it hits 10 out of 10 or whatever the max is, don't even do anything else. It's in sideways action. Um, or, and that's what these two lines mean for C sharp. This is an or condition. Now I want to build a percentage. And I don't want that percentage to be zero dot whatever. I just, I'm building it as, you know, 199.5 or uh, 88.6, you know, whatever it be. But I, I want a, a positive number uh, or above zero number, I should say. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking sideways count. I'm dividing it by the max candles times it by 100 to get the, whatever that is, 75%. Now, let's say that 75%. Is it greater than or equal than my percentage that I'm allowing, which was 30 according to the default? Okay. So in this case, yes, it would be. Uh, there is more sideways action than what I am allowing. So therefore, I want to log it. And I want to log what that sideways count was um, in, in my database. Now, if it goes through this and it finishes up through, it goes through all 10 candles and it has not hit this level where it, it, it thinks it's sideways, then it comes down to here and logs what the sideways count is because it's an acceptable amount of sideways action. It's an acceptable, acceptable amount of consolidation. Okay. And I, I just want to log it, you know, that way I'm, I can monitor it. I don't have it on screen anywhere right now. I can just check in my logs. And right here, I've got it shown for you where this is a PCG, you know, it's a hundred percent check. All checks passed. I'm going to place the trade, you know, I, I'm, I'm connecting the TD Ameritrade. Um, <laughs> and then I start checking for the price history and what the sideways count was. Okay. So this one was minus six out of six. So in other words, there's no price. There, when I took this trade, there was no sideways action whatsoever. Um, and like I said, right now, just for the past couple months, I've been testing this out. So I've just added it to, to, to the end. Um, but what I'm gonna end up doing is, uh, I'm sorry, let me stop. I added it to the end of the checks, okay? So it's outside of the strategy check. I just added it as a last minute right before I send um, send it off to TD Ameritrade to actually take the order. I checked for price price weight or check for no movement or sideways action. And I guys, I know I'm screwing this up. Don't don't rank me for it. I don't care. Okay, I'm just throwing this out there because uh, it'll help someone else. I'm gonna screw up. Uh, I fumble over my words all the time. Just deal with it. And move on. Okay. Um, I know that I need to get this now into my strategy rules, my strategy check um, function, because what I want it to end up doing is before it runs through some of these other other checks, and just throw them real quick and then throw it back up. Um, I want it to check for sideways action first before I start checking through some of my other rules. And hopefully by doing that, I end up speeding the program up, uh, speeding the bot up to where um, it can take more trades or check the watch list uh, sooner, stuff like this. So right now it takes roughly, it takes less than a minute to run this whole thing. Um, I, I want to say I'm right down to with five different stocks. It takes roughly seven seconds to run everything. Uh, and I want to get that down to really, really quick. Um, if I add more stocks to play. So like if, if I want 20 stocks in there. I don't want it taking, you know, almost a minute in order for this whole thing to run because then I can really never um, truly have a bot that checks every minute because I'd be hitting up against that limit. But right now, every five minutes is fine with me. I, I've given the, the bot only $300 to, to trade with uh, this year and because um, I'm really forcing it to make these trades or, or working on uh, making good acceptable trades, not stuff that I got to go back into the broker and change orders on. So anyways, I hope this helps someone. Um, you know, I mean, I know I jumped around a little bit, but hey, you know, smash the like button below if you would follow. Um, and then, you know, go check out my other videos. So just went on Alaska cruise. 
two weeks ago. So I got a couple of videos up there for the, for that, and I'm making more videos based upon uh, our trip to Alaska. And they're short; they're only like a minute, minute and a half, maybe two minutes at the most. So, anyways, y'all take care.